welcome to the Knitting Esquire, a YouTube channel all about my knitting and crafting adventures. We are on episode four and I have so much to talk about. Not only do we have a 2023 year in review, I have finished objects, I have whips, and I have quite a bit of procurement, shamefully, but that's okay. We'll get into all of that. So without further ado, let's jump right in. My name is Candice. You can find me over on Instagram as Candice Sue ESQ Knits and on Ravelry as The Knitting ESQ. Everything that I talk about today will have a project page on Ravelry and I will link all of those Ravelry pages below. So if you want any further information about the projects, you can find it all there. I try to be detailed in everything with the project pages. If you have any questions about anything that I talk about today, please feel free to message me, leave me a comment. Um, you can email me at the knitting esq at gmail.com and I would be more than happy to answer any questions or give any advice that I can provide. Um, I will have all of this information in the description box down below. So just go ahead and click the chevron and you can find all of the detailed information regarding today's episode in that description box. So let's move in to 2023, a year in review. Now, instead of pulling out every single project that I've done for 2023, um, some of them have already been gifted, I am going to do a high level review of what I've completed for 2023. And I will do brief snippets uh, when I edit. So that way you can have pictures of what I've done. Again, all of this is in Ravelry, so if you want deep details on each project, it's all there for you, and I'm happy to answer any questions. So, 2023, I knit more than I actually thought I did, which is, I don't, I don't know, I felt like I knit a lot, but apparently I think I ended up knitting more than I thought. So, um, I broke it down into categories, I have my notes here, and so... Let's start with socks. Um, socks is probably the biggest category. They're easy, they're to take along. I knit a lot, as you can see. Um, I always have a work in progress that's a sock. Uh, the kids are doing sports. It's just so on the go and fantastic and I love them. Um, even if it's hot in Florida, I still wear them around the house because everything is tile and they're comfy and cozy and my feet don't hurt when I wear them. So more power and reason for me to keep knitting them, I think. Um, so socks. I knit 18 pairs of socks this year, past year. Um, I broke those down. I am pretty monogamous on the pattern that I like to knit. I really love knitting vanilla socks. And I like that because you can not only see all the beautiful stripes when I do self-striping yarn, but if I have a sock set, I can do different things with uh, patterning with the different colors of yarn. And so vanilla socks is generally the way I tend to lean. I knit 15 pairs of vanilla socks and I just use the crazy sock ladies uh, vanilla socks on nine inch circulars I don't knit them on anything else I use DPNs for my heel turn and um, and the heel and then I pick up with my circulars for the gusset that's that's it uh, when I get down to the toe I switch back over to the DPNs at about 18 stitches on both sides and then finish up the toe and then I'm off. So the other three pairs of socks that I knit were also by the crazy sock lady. It's her heel do heel toe do -si do pattern. Um, and I typically only knit those for self striping socks. It just makes such the most beautiful chevron and pattern. And I, I love it for self striping. So you should try it if you haven't. I highly recommend it. 
Generally throughout the year, she has a couple of sales. Um, not that her patterns are terribly expensive anyway. I think they're probably around five or six dollars. Um, but generally she has a couple of sales throughout the year. Um, when summer sock camp comes up, which I fully anticipate e participating year three in for myself, um, I knit a lot of socks during that time between May and August. Um, I don't anticipate that changing this year. Hopefully it will be more because I love socks. So socks category is done. I knit four shawls this year. Um, they are the Adventurer Wrap, which is a finished object that I will get to here shortly um, with my 2023 advent from Dragon Horde Garn and um, uh, her mom. I don't know why I can't think of her name. Um, it'll come to me, I promise, and I will be ashamed that I didn't remember it. Um, because I wrote about it almost every day. Um, Yarn Cafe Creations. That's our Christy. Um, and I did the Fizzalicious Wrap, which you can see back here. Um, that I did on the Macmillan Fiber Co. Um, it was their uh, Harry Potter, again, um, Halloween countdown. Um, I knit a bumblebee shawl, which is on the back of this chair. Again, there's better pictures on Ravelry that you can look into. Um, and if you want anything additional on it, just let me know. And then the other um, shawl I knit was the Painting Brick Shawl by Stephen West, which I gifted for Christmas to my mother-in-law. And I think she's worn it just about every day since I gave it to her, which is amazing. And I love it. And it looks so good on her. And I'm so glad that she loves it. Um, I knit three sweaters this year, the Big Cozy Cardi by Andrea Mowry, the My Favorite Adventure Sweater by Tristan of Dragon Horde Yarn, and a the Trestle Tee by Tiff Nealon. And I did that as a test knit, um, and that was beautiful. I loved it. I haven't worn it much, but it's, it's, a, it's fantastic. If you haven't had a chance to knit it it knits up so quick um, and it's a tee and it's beautiful and you you'll love it and then I knit one hat which was a muscle burr muscle muscle burg muscle bra muscle bro <laughs> everybody says it different I think I've heard it more recently as muscle bra uh, that hat <laughs> um, by Azolda Teague and um for some reason, I knit like three or four last year, and this year I only knit one, but that's the bulk of my 2023 knits. Actually, that's all of my 2023 knits. So in total, I knit 18 pairs of socks, four shawls, three sweaters, and one hat. So I have plans for 2024. Um, I am bringing a few of my 2023 projects into 2024, and... I have two pairs, well, I had two pairs of socks. I also have a finished pair of socks for the beginning of this year to show you. So I have now brought in only one pair of socks for 2023. I have my totally tank top that is nearly finished. I showed that in a previous episode, I think episode one. Um, so hopefully we will get that done soon and have that off the needles for spring, summer. Um... I have a languishing whip. It is the Shift Again by Andrea Maori. Someday I will address it. It is in timeout. I I don't know. The yarn is beautiful. It was a poor choice on my end for picking the yarn that I did instead of doing a base that was a constant color. I chose a shifting base and now I have to address it in the arms and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just yarn management to make sure that the shifts are the same on both sides so I don't have weird shifting going on and I don't want to deal with it. So it's just been sitting. Literally the whole thing is done. I just need to knit the sleeves. I should just do it and be done with it 
but I want it to be symmetrical and it stresses me out. And so I just forget about it. Right. And then the only other item I'm bringing into 2024 is my anthology throw, which I showed a couple of episodes ago as well. It's the Wizard of Oz yarn leftovers from the Wizard of Oz yarn socks that I've been knitting in 2023. Um, and so eventually that will get done probably sometime this year, but it's okay. It's a long-term project and I'm okay with that. So we'll let it go. I'll add to it as I feel I want to, and that'll be that. And moving into my plans for 2024. I generally don't make very specific plans for my knitting. I like to just kind of go with the flow. And if I see something that's beautiful, I'll decide to knit it. And I just kind of like to operate that way. Except when it comes to my advent, I always, always, always have the Adventurer Wrap as one of my advents. And I will be purchasing the final year um, of the Harry Potter Hogwarts advent by Dragon Horde Yarns and uh, Cafe Creations. So that one is for sure already slotted. It will be done. I will do it in December. Um, I have made it a goal of myself this year to knit 24 pairs of socks because if I can do 18, why not add a few more? So that's only two pairs a month. That's not bad. And when it comes to the summer months, I typically can get three to four pairs done a month. So I think it's doable. We'll see. I've already started in on it and it's going well. So why not? It's if I don't hit it, it's fine, but that's, that's an obtainable goal. Um, and then there's two other things. I knit one year, it's called the Hit, Hitto Feud cardigan. And I will pop in a little preview of the pattern here. I don't know if I have pictures of my finished object from when I knit it, but if I do, I'll stick those in. I think I finished that one in 2020 or 2021. I had requested from my husband one year for Christmas a the most beautiful yarn from La Bien Ami, and it's expensive and it's been sitting right uh, there, this one right here, um, for a while. And so I'm going to make that one of my projects that gets done this year. Um, I just, I want it, it's time, and I'm using Stash, and it's such a beautiful yarn, it needs to be used. So that will be one of my bigger projects for the year. And last but not least, I, being the Taylor Swift fan that I am, found out that Kristen and Stitches, or yeah, I think that's Stitches and Kristen, Kristen and Stitches, the information will be below. She has always done these beautiful make-alongs for Downton Abbey. And I think she did one for maybe Game of Thrones. And she she used to work for Jimmy, Jimmy Bean's Wool. And randomly, I think she was just setting up a rivalry and sent out like a massive note to people that had participated in previous make-alongs that she had been collaborating with Archaic Fibers to create a Knit the Eras MCAL. And I couldn't not do it. So... I just got confirmation today that the yarn is shipped. It will be here soon. The first clue of the MCAL drops on Friday this week. And it's a blanket. I'm going to knit a Taylor Swift blanket and I'm so excited. So as soon as that yarn arrives, it will be caked and the project will be started. And you get a month to knit each clue and he based the yarn colors off of each album um, as it's represented for the eras presented in concert line format and I'm so excited and I can't wait to take you along for the ride so 
I will probably do just like one episode a month update on that so you can see where I'm at and follow along. If you want to join, join. You don't have to buy the kit. You can join as you want um, just to do the MCAL. I will make sure that all of the details for that are posted and um, I'm looking forward to it. So exciting. So that is my 2023 a look back of the year and my goals for 2024. I would love it if you have goals and ambitions for your knitting, your crafting, your projects for this year to drop them in the comments. I, I want to hear about them. I want to read about them, have discussions about them. I'm so excited for it. Um, it's nice to start fresh and have crafting goals, just something to look forward to. So tell me what yours are. I can't wait to hear about it. Let's jump in to showing off some finished objects. Um, I am wearing a sweater that I knit in 2020. Um, this is called the Ginny Cardigan. Um, I used Emma's yarn uh, in DK weight. I think this is like mom jeans or yeah, I feel like that's the color. If it's not, um, this is in a project page on Ravelry as well. This is, um, I really wanted an owl pattern. And so, um, let me take this off and show you. The back of it is amazing. Up the center of the back of this sweater cardigan um, are owls. And this is probably one of my most worn knits. Um, I love every aspect of this sweater. It's cozy. It's a cardigan. Um, I did not put, I made the button band and it's got the holes for the buttons. I just didn't want to add the buttons. So there's no buttons on it. Quite frankly, I never blocked this. Um, it probably could use a block now, but, um, I love the way that it fit without blocking it. So I never blocked it, but, um, yeah. So that's what I'm wearing today. I'm also wearing socks. I don't want to raise my feet up. I'm wearing a pair of my Wizard of Oz socks that I knit last year. So my feet are all nice and cozy right now. Okay. Finished objects. Um, I have three, I think. So if you followed along on Instagram, um, Obviously, I think I showed a little bit of the progress, maybe last episode or the episode before of my um, Adventurer Wrap by Amba O'Brien. Um, this was knit um, for the Advent season, and it is knit um, with the Dragon Horde and Yarn and Yarn Cafe Creations um, Harry Potter Advent for 2023. And it was knit on US-5 needles. Um, I started it on December 1st and I finished it on December 24th. So it was right on time. Let me find the beginning. I think this is the beginning and this is the end. It's very big. It's very beautiful. It's very colorful. It's done. It's amazing. I've worn it several times. And, oh, just look at it. So this will live probably over on this shelf. These ones are already full with the previous Adventurer wraps. Um, oh, I love it so much. So that is finished object number one. I don't think I have much else to say about that one. Finished object number two is the other advent set that I got for the year. This one was the Freckled Whimsy um, 2023 advent, Hearth and Home. This is 85% superwash merino, 15% nylon. I chose the heel toe do -si do pattern for this by the Crazy Sock Lady. I knit this on US size ones. I started with the Chigo Twists. I switched over to my Addies because those ones were puncturing my finger. <laughs> I started this on December 1st as any normal advent and I ended up not finishing these ones until December 27th with travel and trying to keep up on the wrap. Um, these ones just 
kind of fell off track a little bit. Not bad, not bad, and I'm still happy. Look at them. They are matching exactly. They are so fun and wonderful. I decided to not do a different color for the heel, but just to keep the um, cuff is a, the mini and then go into the 24 colors for the whole month of December. So that is finished object number two. Oh, I also knit the size small for these, which is 56 stitches. I feel like it stays on my leg better to have a little bit tighter. I also end up knitting the foot just a little bit smaller than probably recommended, just because I think it makes it so it stays snug in my heel. It makes it stay tight. And then um, there's no like loose toe. I hate when my socks are loose in the end of my shoes. So um, I knit them just a tiny bit too small. Not bad, just a tiny bit. Maybe like two rows too small. Um, and then finally, I think finally, yep, is whip or finished project number three, which is another pair of socks. Um, I think I might have shown these when I started them. I just started these on December 10th. I finished them on January 8th. Obviously, there was Advent knitting in there. Um, these are just a plain old pair of vanilla socks knit on nine inch circulars, US ones. Um, the yarn is also by Freckled Whimsy. This is part of her Wednesday club from the Netflix series Wednesday. Um, it is on her 8515 uh, base. And this is called Black Dahlia. And they're so cute. Um, I did the heel and the cuff in the mini. And then just the self-striping is the rest of it. And if I am entirely honest with you, um, the bulk of these were knit last weekend. Uh, we, my mother-in-law and my sister-in-law and I went to the Orlando Distaff Day. And I think pretty much from 8.30 in the morning until we left at 5, I knit these socks. So I had finished one whole sock. Um, when I say I started these on December 10th, I maybe was to like here. And then I knit one whole sock uh, at distaff day and then started and got through the cuff and one or two stripes by the end of distaff day. So these really got knit on Saturday and I finished them up mainly on Sunday. And then there was a little bit of a break going back to work and everything. And these were done the 8th, which is Monday, right? So finished object number three. And I get to count this as sock pair number one for 2024. So I'm off to a good start. And I think that wraps finished objects, which is quite a bit. I would say we've been on a little bit of a break. We had um, Christmas in there that we were in Michigan and I didn't record. And then I got sick when we got home from Michigan and back to work and just needed to decompress and start over. And here we are. So let's talk about works in progress. I have three. One of them, I am not, it's... I'm going to finish them. I'm not going to rip them out. They're just not my favorite. So I had heard, well, I've heard quite a bit of people talking about using the Regia yarn and I was interested in it. Um, I've seen how awesome some of the patterning comes out and I really wanted to try it. So when we were in Michigan, um, like my husband is a, a great husband. He makes sure that we stop at, at least one yarn store when we're on trips and so we went to the garn house g-a-r-e-n-h-a-u-s garn house in holland michigan and they had regia there and so i decided i was going to try a pair of socks 
Um, I had finished the Advent socks while I was with at my mom's, and so I wanted to have another pair of socks to knit on the plane on the way home. So I got the Arnie and Carlos line, and this is color number 32834. Um, this is 75% virgin wool, 25% polyamide, and I am just knitting a pair of vanilla socks by the Crazy Sock Lady on my typical Addy size one. And this is how far I made it during my trip. And they're cute. They are so cute. I love the colors. They're fun. I hate the yarn content. I'm sorry. I don't know if it will soften up after I give it a good soak and wash and I I'll throw the well these are virgin wool so they may not do as well in the washer but they have polyamide in them so they should be okay um I'm hoping that a good wash softens this up because it just feels stiff and itchy and I don't mind it so much when I'm knitting them but as a soft sensory person on my feet I don't know if I'm going to be able to wear them as I don't know so if I can't, I will gift them. They will not go to waste. Um, but that's where I'm at with them right now. I've only gotten this far um, on the first sock. I am, I need to count my rows here to figure out. I'm probably 10, 20, I'm probably halfway through the foot. So it shouldn't, it shouldn't take me long to finish this one up and um, get the other ones set on the needles. But um I started these on December 28th and if you have any experience with Regia, let me know if it softens up. I could test it. I could just do a little swatch and test it. I mean, this is basically a swatch. So once I get this done, I'll just test it. But let me know what your thoughts are. Do you like it? Do you have issues with it? Do you not knit with it? Have you ever knit with it? Um, I'm curious. Um, I've heard so many people, you know, I know the crazy sock lady loves her Regia Perfect, um, and other people talk about it all the time. So I was like, oh, I'll give it a shot. I don't know. You let me know. So that is whip number one. Moving right along, since I... Haven't been in the mood to work on those because I haven't decided if I like them or if I'll wear them. They'll get done, but it's not done yet. Um, I jumped into another pair of socks. I started uh, Vanilla Socks again by the Crazy Sock Lady. Um, US Ones, always on my Addies. Um, I am a member of the Magpie Fiber Society, and so you get two skeins of yarn. Um, every, I think it's quarter, quarterly it is, um, of, you can do a speckled or a variegated. And I typically go for the speckled. I'm not much of a variegated, especially if I'm going to knit socks with it. Um, so I typically choose the speckle and I was thinking to myself as part of my 2024, 20, 24 pairs of socks challenge to myself, I want to knit sister socks. And I don't know if my sisters are ever going to watch my YouTube. I think they might. If they do, surprise. Um, I'm knitting socks for the three of us. And I'm excited about it. I have two pair, or two skeins of this yarn, and it'll be perfect. Um, my youngest sister has the same size foot as I do, so that one's easy to knit up. My other sister has ginormous feet, which is okay. Um, but her, her sock will take a little bit more yarn. So we'll definitely make it at least probably through half of the second skein of yarn for the three pairs of socks. Um, so this is fiber society number 31. They don't do any other name, but the number for when, when it's coming out. And I had a mini lying around and I just wanted to do a pop of color at the cuff. So I started with a pop of color. This is, um, olive to you. It's a mini, I think it was part of a Bridgerton set. Um, it's this beautiful blue. And then I have just started, as of this morning, the heel. Um, I started this pair of socks yesterday, by the way. Um, so I'm already through the um, leg of pair one and onto the heel. Um, I 
tell myself, I use the light bulb markers for every 10 rows. Um, so once I hit 60, I do the leg at, well, I do the cuff at 20, the leg at 60. And then once I get through the heel, heel turn and gusset, um, I will start using the stitch markers again to count the rows of my toes. So I know on my socks, I need to knit 50 rounds before I start the toe. Um, and so that's just how I measure it using those, um, light bulb stitch markers. Um, so like I said, I started this pair yesterday. Um, this is on the Magpie Fibers Swanky Sock, which is 80% merino, 10% cashmere, and 10% nylon. Um, these are so soft and cozy. Um, and I am this far into three pairs of what I'm calling my sister socks. And I think I'm going to do something different um, with the blue in each sock so that they're not exactly the same, but they're enough um, like sisters. And I can't wait. Um, I was also thinking about making three project bags to go along with this. Now my sisters don't knit, but you can always use the bags. Um, and I was thinking about getting different fabric for each of us. So for example, um, my youngest sister loves The Office. Um, my middle sister loves um, Wizard of Oz. Um, and we both love uh, Gilmore Girls. I think my youngest sister likes Gilmore Girls too. So maybe I need to throw in some Gilmore Girls fabric and just kind of make a mesh of the three of us and each get bags with our socks. And I just thought that that would be fun. Um, and a fun thing to have with my sisters. So um, those are my goals so far with this project. Um, it is currently living in a bag that I created. This is my butterfly bag. This is Tula Pink fabric, and it's got fun, funky fabric on the inside. So that is sock whip number two. And last but not least in my whip life. Ooh, that's a good saying, whip life. Um, the big one. This project is living in my jellyfish bag by Bags by Awesome Granny. And um, I showed you the yarn for this project last time. I started this project on December 28th. I've gotten quite a bit done. I haven't been able to put it down. It is so potato chippy. I can't wait to get to the next section and it just goes so fast. So this is the Glittering Snowscape Shawl by Stephen West for his 2023-2024 Hiber Knit Along. I am using the Goosey Fibers yarn that I showed off uh, last episode. So I am through section one, through section two, which is this uh, lace patterning. Section three is this waffle stitch. Section four is this arrowhead lace patterning. Section five are the pillars. Section six is the mesh. And I am into section seven, which is all of these slip knits. And they are beautiful. I started this project on December 28th, like I said, and I have a stitch marker here. I knit from the beginning of this shawl to my Pops, Pop Tart stitch marker, which is by, I think this is by Simply Serving, but I'll have to, uh, I'll, I'll put that in the notes, I don't forget. Um, or I do forget who I actually bought that from. It was actually part of the, I um, got some Gilmore Girls yarn, which was like a Pop-Tart. It's like, I don't even know if I like Pop-Tarts is what it's called um, by Cozy um, Creations. And I saw this, the Pop-Tart stitch marker, so I had to buy it. Anyway, um, that stitch marker was where I was um, after one week of knitting. So seven days of knitting and I was all the way through section, what is that? Six, five. 
Now, to be fair, to be fair, um, that was up to about 200 and some odd stitches every row. I just hit where you do a major increase and I'm at like 450 stitches every row. And so I decided to time myself and it takes me about 15 minutes to get through one row now. So things will be slow moving probably from this part forward, um, even with only having like five, four or five more sections left, um, just because there's the sheer number of stitches on this. Um, it's going to take me a little bit longer, which is fine. I anticipated this being a longer knit. Um, I don't think it'll be done by the end of January, uh, especially with the Taylor Swift yarn on its way. So maybe February-ish. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. I'm knitting it on size four needles, US fours with the Goosey Fiber yarn, which is the 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, and it's a various number of colors. It's, a, it's five different colors. Um, and so if you want the details on all of that, please head over to the Ravelry page because I've listed every single color um, and everything like that. And I do believe there's some progress pictures already posted over there as well. And, um, I always try and update on Instagram too. So you can follow me over on Instagram and see all of those updates as I work on this. Um, I probably won't be pretty, I'll try and show if I've gotten, if I've gotten enough done in in between episodes, I'll make sure to update you. Um, otherwise I try to make sure that I have update posts on Instagram and progress pictures on Ravelry as well. So, um, you can go over there and, and check out the progress along the way. So that is all of my whips. The next episode, I'm certain there will be more because like I said, I'm going to cast on that Taylor Swift blanket as soon as it comes. And that leads us into procurements. I'm not going to lie. I've been gluttonous. It's yarn though. And I can't say no. And when you're on a trip, even if it's back home and you go to the yarn store, how do you not buy yarn? And can you, you, you have to. So my mom has been following along on this YouTube adventure. Uh, you've probably seen her comments below if you read them, <laughs> she's cute, but she decided that she wanted to start knitting again. She doesn't remember that she taught me to knit. She doesn't believe that she showed me how to. And maybe I've learned and progressed on my own, but she did show me and she doesn't believe me, but that's okay. So she wanted to get back into knitting. And so while we were in Michigan, my husband and I went to a cute little yarn store and I got her some cotton, some Queensland cotton yarn and some needles and she started off with some dishcloths. I think it's a perfect project to start with for anybody that's new. Um, you get a finished project and even if it's a little wonky, you're just washing dishes. So it's great anyway, it still works, but you have a finished project product pretty quickly and it makes it easier to continue. If you were to start with, I feel, a Stephen West shawl, which he's got easy garter stitch shawls out there but if you start with something that big and it takes forever it can get a little bit defeating and so what better way to just whip out some washcloths or you know dishcloths have your finished satisfying projects and then you can move into something else and I think before the week ended she had knit I think almost all of the yarn and had like three dishcloths and now she's on to a cowl and I love it. I'm loving it so much. Um, so I can't wait to chit chat with her. But every time I call her now, I'm like, what are you doing? And she's like, I'm knitting. <laughs> it's fantastic. I love it. So go mom. I'm proud of you. Keep it up. Um, that being said, uh, I think the only other yarn that I bought while we were in Michigan was the Regia yarn, which I just went over with you. And then 
we came home and last weekend was distaff day in Orlando. And so they had some beautiful vendors set up and, um, I had been eyeing at a few other yarn stores, some yarn from, um, where is this from again? This is from string theory color works. And, um, it's beautiful. It's so bright and cheery. <laughs> I cannot wait to make some socks out of this. Um, it's fantastic. It's an, it's a one, two, three, four, five, six color repeat. And it's like the turquoise and then black and then fuchsia and then black. Um, and it comes with this cute little stitch marker. And um, so this is the continuum base. It is 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. It is soft and squishy. This is probably my most favorite base to knit with. Um, the Magpie Fiber Swanky Sock um, is the same base. And um, this is the colorway neon so these will eventually be socks you'll probably see them up on the wall here um my first quarter of magpie fiber society box came in and again i chose spark or a speckle i always choose speckle this quarter we've got swanky dk which is 80% merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. This is Fiber Society number 34. And it's no it's no secret. You have to go online and order it, so it's not like a mystery. So this is what you get. And you know, I'm not certain that it's that blown out. It looks it's leaning more white than it is. It's more of a lavendery gray. So maybe it's maybe it's a little bit cooler in this than it should be, um, but those those speckles are spot on. So it is this great purpley speckly goodness. I don't have a project in mind for this yet. It is DK and it's two skeins of DK, so we'll see. Could be a good hat, but I don't know. Um, also, while we were at Distaff Day, they had a free table. And this is so fun. I found this, <laughs> this old magazine and they had several of them. This thing is from like the seventies, I think. And it was free. And I opened up and I was like looking through and I was like, oh, I don't know. But I opened up the back and I saw this pattern. Do you not think that this cardigan is absolutely stunning? It's worsted weight. In Florida, it will be hot, but it's beautiful. I think I might try and knit it. I don't know about this year. Maybe, maybe later this year. Um, but this whole thing is called the Fisherman Fashions, and it is all just cabled sweaters. Actually, there's a cabled dress in here for a little girl and mom. It's fantastic. So. It was free. I couldn't say no. And my big gluttonous. Goosey Fibers. Caitlin, you're amazing. I love your colorways. I can't say no when you do a collection drop. So she posted that she was doing The Little Women, which is my favorite. One of my favorite movies. I can watch the the one by Greta Van, I don't know, by Greta um, Van, whatever her last name is. Um, sorry. Uh, over and over and over again. Um, I, I have. I've seen myself do it. So when Goosey Fibers, and I'm sorry for the crinkling, I forgot to take this all out, but I, there's a lot here, so I didn't want to separate it. Um, when I saw that, Goosey Fibers was dropping a Little Women's line collection. I couldn't say no. And they are stunning. So instead of getting full skeins, I got 50 grand skeins of all 11 colors. Blanket? Maybe? I couldn't say no. It will be something amazing. 
Maybe it'll be part of that book blanket that I want to knit that's, oh, I forgot to put that on my list for 2024. I was, okay. Edit 2024, we're adding my book blanket. It has to be done. I said it was going to be done. So it's going to be done. Um, so this is, um, again, 50 gram skeins. And this is on her gosling base which is 75 percent superwash merino 25 percent nylon there's 231 yards in each one and they replicate different characters and portions of the book and i just love them so much and can't wait to make a project out of them so that is everything out in the open that has been happening since last episode um Christmas happened. I got some awesome YouTuber equipment from my husband. Um, he is fully supportive of this venture of mine. And he got me a nice microphone and a camera. And he's amazing. Um, and then my we do we draw names for our family. Instead of having to buy everybody a gift, we just draw a name and then we each buy one gift for um one other person and so my father-in-law got me and uh he got me this sweater I think my mother-in-law picked it out I think that's what they said but it's fantastic anyway please do not disturb knitting in progress I've lived in this sweater since they got it for me it goes so well with leggings which is what it was intended to do it is it's cozy and comfy and it's a crew neck sweater and or sweatshirt and it's amazing and I love it so much um other than that the kids are back in school sports are in full swing which also means that knitting is in full swing um on the weekends especially as we have to sit through practices and games which I love to do but I also love to have my hands going and knitting at the same time so I'm looking forward to that um there is work happening next week is crazy at work i won't be able to record next week um i don't think i'll be able to squeeze it in we have the buccaneers um first playoff game on monday night that we're going to and then i have a work event from tuesday until friday and then i think we have plans on saturday and sunday next week so it is crazy hectic coming up Knitting will ground me. I have lots of time for dates with my husband coming up that I'm looking forward to. Um, we have a cruise at the end of the month for his birthday, just him and I, that I'm looking forward to. So lots of things to look forward to. Lots of knitting to come. I cannot wait. And I hope that your crafts and knitting and crocheting and whatever you're getting into is making you equally as happy and bringing you all of the joy. Um, do not forget to like, subscribe, comment, all of that happy YouTube stuff that it likes. Um, let me know that you like it by ringing the bell, turn on your notifications, and I will see you on the next episode. Bye!